Today on the School of Podcasting, we have a really cool because of my podcast story. And if you're a person that has been thinking, I don't know, maybe for years that, you know, I'll start a podcast as soon as I get the, uh, you know, and that one thing. And if I could just get the, yeah, guess what? It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to share a couple mistakes I've made in recent weeks. I'm actually leaving in some things that I normally would edit out because, hey, that's the way people talk. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be good. Hit it, ladies. The School of Podcasting with Dave Jackson. Podcasting Sense 2005. I am your award-winning Hall of Fame podcast coach, Dave Jackson, thanking you so much for tuning in. If you are new to the show, this is where we help you plan, launch, and grow your podcast If you're ready to start your podcast after you get done listening to this episode, simply go to schoolofpodcasting.com slash listener, and you'll see where I've applied a coupon code for either a monthly or yearly subscription. And one of the things we do at the School of Podcasting is we have group coaching, these little Zoom meetings where I answer questions and we all kind of network together. And Craig from the Live Well and Flourish show how to because of my podcast story and realize these don't have to be earth shattering. If you can simply answer the question because of my podcast blank and that blank is something that well wouldn't have happened except yeah, you guessed it. You have a podcast because I started my personal podcast, live well and flourish, live well and flourish.com. I started a podcast that goes along with a textbook I co-authored where I provide a short summary of the most important points of each textbook chapter. Mm. And we use it in a course, a couple of courses at my university and at other places as well. So because of that, I got a small little innovation award from the college, which is not a big deal, but um, it's actually that podcast. And then one that we do called Cyberways that we do through the university has really generated a ton of goodwill. You know, if I hadn't started my personal podcast, I never would have done the others because it was a pretty low bar. And once you have the gear and know how to do it, right? it's not all that difficult to expand it out. Nice. So com- compared to getting an award from, you know, the city of Dallas or something like that, it's pretty small, but I, I was happy. Yeah, very. And, and of course, that university is which one? Uh, Louisiana Tech University, College of Business. There we go. That's a because of my podcast story, buddy. I like it. And what's cool about Craig's show, and again, you can find it at livewellandflourish.com. I'll have a link in the show description, is he's doing it because he just kind of wants to help people. Like, he's, I'm not here to make money. And then let me read you the description. It says, if you're ready to think beyond material and external success, if you're ready to take control of who you are and the kind of life you live, if you're ready to flourish, this podcast is for you. The topics I cover help you understand what it means to live a flourishing life and a life of meaning, satisfaction, and enduring happiness. And what I loved about Craig's story, it actually reminded me, you know, he started his own podcast and then was like, oh, I could use these here and here. And many, many moons ago, I worked as a copier technician, which led to me training people how to run their office equipment And in the process of doing that, I worked with the service department, I worked with the parts department, I worked with the sales department, I worked with all different parts of the company, and so I created a newsletter back when they were printed on paper. And one of those got to the desk of the CEO who said, hey, I want that every time you put one out. And it let him see what I was up to, what I thought, I had little inspirational things in there as well, and that led to him moving me many times throughout the company, be like, oh, we have a problem over here. Send Dave. And in 1993, I won employee of the year for a Fortune 500 company. And it was the first time somebody who wasn't in sales had ever won that particular award. And my point here is I just put something out there and you never know who's going to see it. And when they find it, it might lead to other opportunities. I always say when you start a podcast, you're either going to end up with a really cool podcast 
or a really cool story about that time when you started a podcast. So again, check him out at Live Well and Flourish. And Craig, thanks so much for sharing your Because of My Podcast story. If you have one, simply go over to schoolofpodcasting.com slash contact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have always said that if you aim at perfection and you miss, you land on very, very good. And so what I want to talk about today is that your podcast, especially if you are a perfectionist and you know who you are, it doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, one of the things that in the original days of podcasting that really kind of attracted people is it was real. It was people talking the way people talk. We weren't going, hey, Steve, hit me up with the news. I'm going to pass it over to Sharon. Okay. No, we just talked like we talked. And that meant occasionally something was not entirely smooth. And I'll give you an example of something that I grew up with. My dad, God bless him, had his own language. We had a local store called Clerkins. See, yeah, that's funny. We had a local store <laughs> called Clarkins. There you go. That's a, that's a classic example. And my dad called it Clerkins. I'm not going to fix that. That's the way people talk. So the store was called Clarkins. My dad called it Clerkins. The car is called Subaru. My dad called it Sabaru. Uh, there's a car company called Renault. And my dad called it Renault. And the list goes on to where... My dad would say something like, oh, I'm going to go out later. I'll pick it up when I go to Clerkins. And everyone via context knew that my dad was going to Clerkins and we didn't make him edit it and redo it. And I just want to point that out that your show doesn't have to be perfect. Now, if this is a podcast that is used as a marketing arm of your company, you don't want it to be too sloppy. In fact, you may not want it to be sloppy at all, and that's perfectly fine, by the way. One of the great things about a podcast is it's a recipe. It's not a statue, and you can chisel away at the marble that is your podcast until you get it the way you want it. And some people will draw stick figures, and some people will you know, write this beautiful masterpiece of audio. In fact, I just did another one. I just said stum people. I'm not editing that out because I'm pretty sure a large chunk of you may be going, wait, you said what? Yeah. Hit the rewind button. I said stum people, not some. I said stum. Somehow my tongue and teeth were not in full harmony on what was going to come out of my mouth. And I just say this because I see so many people that need the exact right music and the exact right this. And the exact, and I was like, if you shoot at perfection and you miss, you're probably going to land on very, very good. So what I thought I would do today is share some oopsies and things that I've done that, as the old saying goes, you always want to learn from your mistakes. The better thing to do is learn from someone else's mistakes. And this is one, by the time you hear this, I will have fixed. And that was because a few episodes ago, I interviewed Holistic Hilda. And I was, she had this cool Because of My Podcast story. And the headline was, Because of My Podcast, I got to go to Brazil. And I'm not sure where the word Brazil came from. But it turns out the country that involved the Because of My Podcast story was not Brazil, it was Kenya. And also because of her podcast, she's also gone to Cuba, Australia, Peru. She's been to all sorts of different places. But the Because of My Podcast story was about Kenya. And for whatever reason, I put Brazil. Mainly, I'm going to, if somebody said, wait, why did you do that? I'm going to say, because I am a product of the American education system. Or as some people say, I are a college graduate. Yes, I have two degrees. Another thing, and this is one that drives me nuts because I've done this before, and it doesn't make any logical sense. If you're new to the show, I really like things to make sense. And that is, I woke up last week to James Cridlin 
saying that Dave Jackson had shared his ideas about podcast movement and the whole Ben Shapiro thing. Now, if you missed that, I put it at the end of last week's episode. I talked about it. I will be talking about it again in the future when I'm ready. I am doing a ton of research on some of this. So, and again, I will give you a disclaimer. But when James said that, I was like, huh, I better double check. Now, why was I double checking? I am normally not a guy, as I look up right now, I have three tabs open on a browser. But last week, I was doing a ton of research. I was looking up different things, and I had a ton of tabs open. And I was typing in my show description into WordPress. And that's where I had expanded this blog post. And I noticed as I was going to bed that I had gone through in one tab and fixed all my typos. And I am pretty sure that I hit publish. Apparently not, though, because as I was going to bed and I'm closing down my different things and closing all these tabs, I see where I had the exact same blog post open in another tab. So I've been working on the same blog post kind of from two different directions. And one had all the typos corrected and the other one did not. Well, I was, mm, boy, about 99% sure that when I closed tab number one that had all the typos fixed, that I had hit publish. So consequently, I didn't want to publish the second tab I had because that one did not have the typos fixed in it. And I just closed it. And when James said, Dave Jackson has spotlighted his thoughts, et cetera, et cetera. I was like, you know, I better double check that. So I immediately got out of bed, hopped over and was horrified because every single typo and all these different kind of phrases that I had that I'd updated, it was basically my rough draft was now being spotlighted by James Cridlin from podnews.net. And I was like, oh, you got to be kidding me. So I kind of immediately jumped in, fixed all the typos I had before. People had already noticed them and were leaving comments. And so my advice there would be when you're working on your show description, especially in WordPress, A, don't use multiple tabs, and B, double check everything is good before you go to bed. And I should have when I think about it, when I was like, hmm, that's where these are not, you know, these typos are still here. I should have somehow gone back, double checked, closed the uh, the actual blog post in this case and reopened it and see what version of it. But unfortunately, I felt bad because James had spotlighted it and it was just horrible. The blog post, the topic was okay, but the typos made it look like it was written by, you know, a sixth grader. But notice I was able to fix it. Sure, a few people saw the mistakes more than I wish had, but in the long run, from this point forward, those mistakes are now gone. And so now I want to kind of peel back a little further. When I, once you fix the mistake, you want to go back and go, how did this happen? And I think I've identified the thing with the two tabs, but there's another thing that I want to start doing. And if you're doing this already, God bless you, because I wish I could. I don't batch record these as I record this right now. As I am recording this for you, it is 8.01 p.m. and it's going to be live in four hours. And that is something that I need to change. I, I preach it all the time. I preach it to all of my students and all of my members, everyone in my community. I'm like, you need to have some in the can so that when life happens, you've got something going. And next week, I have a friend coming in from out of town and some other things, and I'm going to record another show tomorrow that you will hear next Monday. But you want to make sure to leave enough margin in your life so that when things like a good friend comes in from out of town or whatever happens, you know, somebody gets sick. If you have children, of course, they're always unpredictable. I have people in my family that are unpredictable. You need to leave a little margin, and I have over the past three months, carved out a little more margin, but I need a little more margin to allow some flexibility in your life and the ability to pivot when you need to without making it so stressful. So 
I would say that's kind of a mistake. Sometimes we don't have a whole lot of control over it, but if you're just kind of going, 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 especially when you're brand new with this, you love it so much and you're so passionate about it that you can really push yourself to the max to where there is no margin. Maybe you're even cutting out sleep and things like that. I would say be sure to leave some margin in your life so that you can handle things and you're not publishing things four hours before they go live. Now, I haven't done this one in a while, and that is you download your show. It's been out for a few days, or maybe one of your listeners emails you and says, hey, do you know there's like 20 seconds of silence in the middle of your episode? Or again, there was something that you were going to edit out, and unlike maybe saying a word a little oddly, this is something you're like, oh, wow, that makes me look really bad. What you can do is go back to your computer and edit the file so that it's exactly the way you want it. And what I recommend, and I realize that there is documentation out there, and this is true, you don't have to have the exact same file name. That's true. But when you do that, there will be an outage for that episode as Apple and Spotify and Google and Amazon, all of them have to realize that, oh, Dave changed the file name. We thought it was this, and now it's that. They have to update their database to point at the new file. My advice is to export the file with the exact same file name so that when you replace a file that was, let's say, 123.mp3, and you you know delete it, and then you upload a file called 123.mp3, the apps don't have to update because they're already looking at 123.mp3, and it's a simple way to replace your file. If you have any questions on that, always contact your media host, whoever it is, and they can help you through that. But there are times when you're like, no, Dave, I need to fix this mistake. You can, my advice is export the file with the exact same file name. In just a second, I'll talk about how new technology has created new mistakes. So what is this new technology? What dawned on me, it's actually not new. Libsyn has been doing dynamic content insertion since probably 2006, I'm going to say, maybe 2005, because they were started in 2004. Full disclosure, I work for Libsyn. But I remember that they bought a company called Kiptronic in the early days of podcasting. And so what we're talking about is, well, you just heard one. That ad you just heard about the School of Podcasting or whatever ad you just heard was inserted dynamically. And when you hear about the question of the month, that's inserted dynamically. I know a lot of times people use this for ads. And when you hear about me talk about where I'm going to be, that is inserted dynamically And this has created a problem that something I haven't done yet, although I did one last week where I accidentally put the question of the month as a pre-roll. So if you started last week's episode and you'd have to be one of the early people that got it and you click play and you heard me talk about the question of the month, of course, which you can answer at schoolofpodcasting.com slash question. I'll talk more about that in a second. But uh, I was like, oops. And all I did was go in and say, hey, that's not pre-roll, that's ad number three or four, which will be coming up here in a second, which of course is not an ad. It's me doing dynamic content. So that was, quote, a mistake. But here's not the mistake I want to talk about when it comes to dynamic content. And notice I'm calling it dynamic content because there's dynamic ads, but you can use it for stuff like I'm doing, which is content that changes every week or every month. And I want somebody to go back and listen to a show from three months ago and hear about this month's question of the month. And so what you need to do is really watch your volume level. This may not be a feature that you currently have, but more and more media hosts are adding it. And so what I'm using is a plugin from Waves, and it's called WLM+. And I actually use a preload there from my buddy, Mike Russell, who runs Music Radio Creative, and it's called Podcast Loudness and Limiter. And it basically automatic automatically sets the volume level. And so this way, I will export this episode using that output. And then any kind of dynamic content that I do, I use that as well. And that way, 
somewhere in the middle of my podcast, when an ad comes in, hopefully it doesn't blast your face off or cause you to grab the volume knob and crank it up. And then when the next segment comes in, it blasts your face off. That is a deal breaker. I've spoken with many different podcasters and many different listeners. And one of the things that will get your audience to tune out is if they have to ride the volume knob. So with this new technology, pay attention to your volume levels when you export your finished MP3. This is kind of fun because that just made me think of this. And this is, again, not a mistake that I've made. And it's not really a mistake, but I want to make sure you're aware that Spotify only uses MP3 files. And so what that means is, I, for me, I work for Libsyn. If you upload an M4A file because you recorded it on your phone, we convert it to an MP3 file. And I honestly don't know if other media hosts do that. I'm going to assume, because there are a lot of people that want to record their podcast on their phone, to which I always kind of gently and politely point them at the top of the podcast charts or trending lists and go, how many of those are done via a phone? So not that you can't, I'm just saying you're competing against people that are at least using a microphone. And so if you are a person that's like, hey, my podcast isn't showing up as quick in Spotify as it is in other places, it's because your media host is probably having to process it and turn it into an MP3. So if you're going to export your podcast, I highly recommend MP3 files. I typically export at 128 kilobits per second stereo. It's about one megabyte per minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In podcasting news, and this is for the super nerdy podcast editor or the person, if we go back to the perfectionist, Isotope is a company that makes a product called RX. Like right now, I use RX9 for some things, and they just came out with RX10. And the version of RX10 that has all the goodies in it is $799. And they're saying that's a steal because it's $400 off. So it's really expensive. And so what I wanted to do was compare RX10, which has some new and improved tools. I'm not saying they're not good. I'm just saying they're expensive and there may be alternative ways to do that. So they have an example here of a tool that basically is made for if you do phone calls. And what it does is it's an upgrade of a tool called Spectral Recovery. And so it takes something that sounds horrible and then adds frequencies that are missing. So here's a quick uh, selection of theirs that shows before and after of kind of what sounds like a phone call or maybe just somebody on a really bad headset. My wife and I just bought a Spanish revival house. It's got high ceilings and exposed beams. We're super excited to add some personal touches. We really love the house, but we're stuck on what colors we want to use for each room. So that is obviously not great sounding, but listenable. But here's what it is after they use their tool. My wife and I just bought a Spanish revival house. It's got high ceilings and exposed beams. We're super excited to add some personal touches. We really love the house, but we're stuck on what colors we want to use for each room. So now I'm going to play the original then their version, and then something I did with a plug-in, and then go back to their finished version because it sounds better. My wife and I just bought a Spanish revival house. It's got high ceilings and exposed beams. We're super excited to add some personal touches. We really love the house, but we're stuck on what colors we want to use for each room. And so if you're like me, you go, yeah, that I heard that middle one, and all of a sudden it kind of sounded like this a little bit, a little too mid there that I just couldn't pull out. So their tool is interesting, but is it worth $800? Now, granted, you get a suite of things like that, but my point is, even their first one, I would call listenable, and you could go into something like Hindenburg or Audacity and add a little bass and make it a little better. You're not going to make it sound as good as the $800 plug-in, but my point again here is it doesn't have to be perfect. I did do one other thing. I ran it through Descript, which has that studio sound. Now, studio sound typically does a phenomenal job of getting rid of reverb, which is one of the tools in RX-10, and it kind of just makes it sound like you're in a studio. It's kind of a one-click 
do everything. And here's how the original sounded when I ran it through Descript. My wife and I just bought a Spanish revival house. It's got high ceilings and exposed beams. We're super excited to add some personal touches. We really love the house, but we're stuck on what colors we want to use for each room. And I promise I won't make you have to listen to that clip again. That was kind of different because there wasn't much noise to remove. And if you're listening with headphones on, there are a couple times where the bass turned up and you're like, oh, that sounds good. And then it went away, which is kind of the worst thing you want to do because then people notice the differences. But my point here again is it's probably good enough. And you start with where you are. Right now I'm talking into a $400 microphone. And if I unplug it and plug in this one, this is an $80 microphone. Do you hear $300 worth of difference? It's, you know, this sounds great. It just so happened that, and this is sometimes I want to, you'll hear handling noise because there's no stand for it right now. But this is something where there are many things that I do because of my role as a podcast consultant. Would I own Isotope RX-10 if I wasn't editing audio for people and if I wasn't a podcast consultant? Probably not. Would I own a Shure SM7B, the $400 microphone that I use? No, I was really pretty happy with my Electrovoice RE320. The microphone I'm talking into now is a Samson Q2U. So this is where I always come back to. It is the content, not so much how it sounds. This doesn't, this sounds maybe a little more clear than the SM7B, but in the end, it's the content and it doesn't have to be perfect. It has to be listenable. And granted, that original clip was, mm, you know, not a lot of warmth to it. But if that's the only thing that you have that you have no control over, then you got to use what you got to use. But when it comes to guests, remember, you can't blame the guests for bad audio if you let them on your show. If somebody comes up and they sound like, yeah, and you let them on your show, that's on you. And that's where you got to say, hey, do you have a microphone? Do you have a quieter room? Do you have something where somebody's not being dismembered in the background or something that's going on? Things like that. That is up to you. But going back to my main point, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because when you shoot at perfect, you land on really, really good. And one thing, as I listen back to this, I want to make sure that we're clear on something. I'm not saying it doesn't have to be good. Well, Dave said it does. It, it just has to be listenable. Okay, that's true. I said that. But also, remember what I said. When you're aiming for perfection, you land on really good. Not, I'm going to aim at acceptable, because if you miss it, where do you end up? Yeah, so don't do that. Keep that in mind. I'm I'm just trying to get people that are stuck on making it perfect to let you know that it doesn't need to be perfect. And also, in the whole, will anyone listen to me? I've got a couple episodes about imposter syndrome that I will put into the show description, and you can find that at schoolofpodcasting.com slash 844. Also, you should always fix your typos. I'm not saying typos are okay. So again, I aim for perfect with my typing. If I have a typo, I fix it as soon as I find it. Also, if you do want to investigate the Isotope product, it turns out that they are sold via Sweetwater, and I have an affiliate program with or an affiliate relationship. So I'm going to leave that in there as well. Uh, Just to point things out that sometimes you don't need to edit. I do have an affiliate relationship with Sweetwater. So if you want to check it out, you can actually use those plugins and the software for, I believe, 30 days for free before you have to pay for them. And speaking of affiliates, if you're a person, if you're a podcaster and people are like, hey, how can I get into podcasting? Did you know that you can go to schoolofpodcasting.com slash affiliates and become an affiliate for the School of Podcasting? And if somebody signs up, you earn a commission and you get a commission every month that they stay subscribed 
I'll put a link to that as well at schoolofpodcasting.com slash 844. Another link that'll be out at schoolofpodcasting.com slash 844 will be a link where you can sign up at schoolofpodcasting.com slash listener, and that has a built-in coupon. Thanks so much for listening. We'll see you again next week. Until then, take care. God bless. Class is dismissed. No bloopers today. I just want to let you know that the music that you hear at the end of the show that I have written permission to use is from the band Kings X, and they have a new album out called Three Sides of One. I'll have a link to that as well at schoolofpodcasting.com slash 844.